Hey guys, welcome back to uh, ENT Made Easy. So, this one is made for Mia. So, a shout out to Mia. She requested that I redo the abdomen video because of the music in the background. I was trying to be goofy, it didn't work out. Alright, so, a few things. Um, just kind of broadly cover the solid organs and the hollow organs. And then talk about blunt trauma and some considerations in regards to the abdomen and also penetrating traumas and in regards to the abdomen. I'm not gonna call, cover every single little thing though. Alright, so first things first, we have two types of organs in the abdominal region. We have your solid organs, so that would entail like your liver, so this right here is, is your liver, then you have your pancreas kind of tucked in underneath behind the liver. Uh, your spleen is kind of on the left side of the patient. Now, remember it's very important that when we're talking about a side, like for a patient, we're talking about their side. It's never our side. So. If I'm looking at the patient like this, right here, right? So we're looking at the patient from our angle. Now, if I say it's on the right side, I'm not talking about my right. I'm talking about the patient's right. So now that's very important to remember just throughout your medical career because it'll confuse a lot of people. So remember, it's always the patient's side, not your side. All right, so all that being said, um, yeah, so we have solid organs and we have hollow organs. Now, the biggest difference between um, solid and hollow organs, just uh, as far as the EMT goes, you know, that's important to us as EMTs working down in the medical field and the EMS, is that hollow organs aren't very vascular. They're not vascular, so what, what does that mean? That means that they're not gonna bleed out as bad. They won't bleed out as bad. Um, on the other hand, now, your solid, your solid organs, they're very vascular, so that means they have a lot of vessels. They have a lot of blood in them. So if you actually injure those organs or rupture them, they're gonna bleed a lot. Now, just between you and me, not that. Um, so now, from your thoracic cavity, so thoracic cavity means your chest, this up here is supposed to be your chest. From your thoracic cavity down to your pelvic region, your pelvis would be like down here below, we can actually lose up to about 13 liters of blood. That's a lot of blood. We only carry between 5 liters to 6 liters of blood, depending on your size, okay? So that's a lot of blood. So if we rupture one of these, these solid organs and they bleed out, that's a pretty big deal. Now just to kind of break it down even more, in your pelvic region alone, you can lose about three liters of blood. In your thoracic cavity, your chest, you can lose another three liters of blood. Like that's how much you can fill in that thoracic cavity. So then whatever's left over can actually fill up in your abdomen. Now I said no, you can fill up to three liters of blood here and three liters of blood down here in your pelvic region. Well, in your stomach, you, you can obviously fill up more. So about seven, roughly seven, six liters of blood can fit in your abdomen. But you actually won't even notice that your patient is bleeding out in the abdominal region. At least physically, you won't be able to tell physically from just looking at the stomach until they lose about three liters of blood. That's when uh, you start seeing bruising, swelling, distension, and you know your patient is gonna start going through shock at that point if they haven't already done so. Because we don't really start going through shock or like start showing uh, signs of real bad shock or declining shock, the de uh, decompensating shock, that means they're crashing, until we lose about 20% of our blood. So about, if we lose about three liters of blood, that's well beyond that, that 20%, right? We're, we're talking about 50 plus now of blood loss in the abdominal region. That's why it's such a big deal. All right, so we kind of figured out that hollow organs are not very vascular, right? Solid organs are very vascular, so if they bleed out, they're gonna bleed out a lot if you rupture one. Awesome, we got that. Now, I'm not gonna go into crazy detail about where every single little thing is. There's no point in this little video. That's up to you. But I am gonna leave you with something that might help you out. And this should help you out throughout your entire career here. Remember this. All of your solid organs, for the most part, are gonna be 
on the upper side of your abdominal region, right? On the top side of your abdomen. All of your hollow organs, for the most part, will be on the lower side of your abdomen. Now, your abdomen is broken up into four quadrants. Quadrants. Four, right? Quadro, if you know Spanish or Latin. All right, so I'm going to divide them up right now. So this right here is what divides both sides. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. And then your belly button will be like right here somewhere. And then this line right here separates top to bottom, all right? So let's say, also by the way, this right here, I'm gonna put an arrow on the chest, is the right upper quadrant, all right? This right here, this quadrant, is the left upper quadrant. And then guess what these are called? What? Right lower quadrant. And left lower quadrant right here so all of your your solid organs for the most part are going to be found in your right upper quadrant and left upper quadrant if you know that by looking at the patient the mechanism of injury uh where the bruising is you kind of have a better idea of how bad this is going to be prepare yourself right now if you go let's say you go to a car accident, the guy is leaning over the window, uh, over the, the steering wheel, let's say that. And you see a big old bruise right here, right below the thoracic cavity, right? But it's in the upper, the upper quadrants, both of the upper quadrants. I'm thinking like, whoa, this guy has a big old bruise right here. Let's say he was maybe going like 40, mi 40 miles an hour because that's what the speed limit is. Let's say he was doing that. Like, there's, that's some significant force behind this right here. If he has a belt, a bruise right here, I'm thinking he possibly ruptured his liver. That's very vascular. His spleen, which could cause peritonitis, a lot of irritation. We'll get into that maybe in a different chapter or a different lecture, my YouTubes. Uh, but yeah, but just take that home today. Just put that in your back pocket, all right? Remember that. Your solid organs are gonna be found in the upper quadrants. Cool. And then your hollow organs are all going to be found in the lower quadrant. And we have right upper quadrant, we have left upper quadrant, we have right lower quadrant, and we have left lower quadrant. All right, so now that we got this out of the way, kind of talked about, you know, where somewhat the solid organs are and stuff like that. You know, your liver's up here. Your liver's more on the right upper quadrant side, but some of it does extend into your left upper quadrant. Now, if you want to reference this and kind of get an idea of what, what is where, if you kind of want to pause it and you just look at the abdomen, I kind of color coded everything for you. So if, but not every single organ is in here, okay? Remember that. If they're in solid color, that means they're solid organs, okay? If they just have the lines in here, just lines, they are hollow organs. So for example, this big light green thing right here, that would be your large, your large intestine. That's what that represents. And then this, this whole bunch of little swirly mess of purpleness right here, that's supposed to represent your lower intestine, okay? And then that's your stomach right here. And then you have your pancreas behind, underneath, tucked in behind your uh, liver, you like your big old liver right here in orange. You have your spleen over here. It's like in a pinkish color. And then your, your gallbladder would be like right here too, like right underneath. I saw you just brought in black. That's your gallbladder right there somewhere in that region. But this is to give you a good idea of what's going on. Now, let's talk about trauma. So just in general, when we're talking about ENT, so we're keeping it basic, right? This is an ENT mini lecture. Um, when we're talking about the abdomen and trauma, there's only two types of trauma for EMTs that you should know about. There's blood trauma, and then there's penetrating trauma. Now, let's just to put it in, in, uh, in perspective, let's say you're playing baseball. You're playing baseball with a little Timmy. You pissed off little Timmy. Little Timmy hit you with the baseball bat in the abdomen. But it didn't break your skin. That's called blunt trauma. You were hit, there was an impact, but the skin is still intact. I hope you get that. Now, let's go ahead and say, I don't know where you live. Maybe you live in Fresno, maybe you live in LA or Cincinnati. But let's say you live in the rough neighborhood, right, of that city, the little rough area. You, you're going to McDonald's, you just got paid, um, hey, I'm going to get a Big Mac. So you, when you go to McDonald's, you get your Big Mac, 
you're walking outside, you're happy, you got your little Big Mac, like, oh, I'm gonna go eat this Big Mac, it's gonna be an awesome day. And then some gangbanger comes up and shoots you in the abdomen because he wants your Big Mac too. So, that bullet that's going, that's the bullet, by the way. That's the wind, the force behind the bullet. It's gonna be going through your, blah, it's going through your, everything, through your liver, your stomach, maybe even your spleen, why not, right? It's already a bad day, let's make it worse. That is called penetrating trauma because it's penetrating your abdomen. Now let's talk, let's get deeper into this. We're about to get into physics here, people. Brace yourself. All right, so let's stick with this. Right now I'm in penetrating trauma. So, and you will see this in your chapters. Um, uh, most books have this. There is something called cavitation. Now when you think cavitation, I think cavity, so it doesn't make sense to me, but then I rethink everything. So think cavity, like a tooth, you know that hole is a cavity, right? So whenever you have an object, a projectile, that's going, a rifle, let's say it's a, a bullet from a rifle, that force, that bullet is creating force that extends beyond the bullet itself. It's like, hey, there's force behind it, right? So there's force behind it. So as that bullet is going through your abdomen, not only is there gonna be damage in the pathway of that bullet, but also from that force that extends outward from that bullet. And that's called cavitation because a cavity is a hole, right? So that force is creating a temporary cavity, like an oral cavity or your mouth, your nasal cavity. It's a cavity, it's an opening, it's a big space. So that creates a cavity. Well, that cavity, the force that's creating that cavity can actually rupture something else beyond that pathway. So it could maybe possibly rupture your gallbladder. Let's say you miss your gallbladder. It could possibly rupture your pancreas just from that force itself. Maybe even your small or large intestines. So that's what cavitation is, all right? So that, that, that's pretty much uh, penetrating traumas and then what can happen after the fact in a nutshell. Now let's go into blunt trauma. Let's go back to little Timmy in the baseball game. So after you pissed off little Timmy, he hit you with the baseball bat, right? Okay, well, let's say he hit you. That force was not, that force that was behind that bat was not strong enough to actually pierce your skin, to open the skin, to cause you bleeding, right? But that doesn't mean that that force wasn't strong enough to actually rupture a liver, rupture a spleen, all right? So this is where we get into physics some more. Energy is not destroyed. So once this hits my hand, it doesn't stop there. The energy continues through my hand. It might be diminished, but it continues. So if that baseball bat hits the side, let's say it hits you like right here on the side, right? That energy is gonna continue to go, 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 go. And if it's strong enough, it can, might rupture um, something inside. So if you ever have any kind of blunt force trauma on your patient, that's the tricky one. That's the one that really sucks because you don't, you don't really don't know what's going on. Um, and you see bruising up here, like bad bruising, always assume worst case scenario. So assume like, hey, this guy might have um, a ruptured spleen, a ruptured liver, depending on where the location is. So that's why it's good to know where they are, but I just, I just don't expect you guys to learn the locations off my video. That's up to you. I just want to give you a general idea of where everything's at, the landscape, right? So upper, lower, upper is more solid, lower is more hollow. If you know that, now you can break it down even more on yourself, reading a book, stuff like that. Uh, so that's it with trauma. That's it uh, with the regions, the quadrants, and all that stuff, and the leaders of blood. So the MOI, mechanism of injury. The mechanism of injury is a hint. It's what happened. So as I approach the car, before I even get to the patient, I see this guy is laying over his steering wheel, right? Because he had it was a head-on collision. Now the MOI is gonna tell me, like, damn, this guy is gonna have like some kind of uh, trauma to either his chest, his head, chest, or abdomen. Um, and then when you get there and you do see bruising right here, the MOI proved me right. And now I gotta think even deeper. Like there, there's gonna be some bleeding possibly. So let's get going because I can't do much. Not even a paramedic can do much out there for a ruptured liver. Nothing at all, you know. So uh, things to consider, things to know. Uh, 
And if you have any questions, just uh, put comments down there below. Like I said, this video was made strictly off of one of the comments from me. A shout out again in case I forgot. Um, you're awesome. Thanks for your comments. I really appreciate them. And I will be making another video on BVM, Airway Management. Alright, peace.